And as I was progressing through the scene, I found out that I wasn't really doing it very well. The director made no exemption in showing how disappointed, it was a very mild word, how disappointed he was in me. He was ranting and raving and was uh, rude, he was mean. Uh, he didn't help me and obviously I was all of 24 and I really didn't know how I was going to please him. I was trying everything in my small little knowledgeable brain that I had at that time to please this director that I could do the scene really well because acting was my passion and I really wanted to prove to him that I could do this. I just wanted to go up to him and say, you know, please have faith in me. I'll just show me. I'll do it this time. Please, please, please. But, you know, obviously you can't do that. You're the main protagonist and you've got to kind of, you know, walk the walk and talk the talk. Till ultimately, at around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I think he gave up on me pretty much. Because, I'm not too sure, because he just flung the entire script up in the air, it flew all over the face, all over the place in front of my eyes, scattered through the breeze and fell on the floor. And he said, Ye ladki ko badlo isse zara bhi nahi hoga. Ye kyun aayi hai ye yahan pe, mere serial barbaad karne ke liye. And I will translate that for you in English, that why has this girl come here? to act in this role and completely ruin my serial. I don't know whether he was angry. Do you think he was angry? <laughs> yeah, I think so, slightly. And he walked off. My stomach was churning. I had sweat under my armpits. My mouth was dry. And obviously, what was happening with my eyes? A 24-year-old only knows how to cry, right? The tears were just rolling down my eyes. They didn't stop for the next one and a half hours till I reached home. I lived in Churchgate. This happened in, in, in Goregaon, where Film City is. I was driving myself, my small little Maruti uh, 800 in those days, and I had a cell phone for emergency. And in those days, the cell phone per minute was 16 rupees. I'm talking about the year Zod. Yeah, I'm a dinosaur. I'm a dinosaur. Can anyone in Gen Z imagine spending 16 rupees a minute? <laughs> your parents would be broke if they had to pay your bill at that time. And uh, I drove all the way home. It took me more than one and a half hours because tears were just flowing down my eyes and I was wiping it. And I was calling my sister and saying, I'm a flop. I'm useless. Who am I fooling? I'm a fraud. I should never have been an actress. I'm a stupid fool. Who the hell do I think I am? She couldn't get a word edgeways because obviously I was full of pity. I was full of pain. I was full of anger. I was full of, I didn't know whether I was more upset at him or whether I was upset at myself. I reached home, I went inside the bathroom and I was crying and crying and crying because obviously you don't want everyone to see you in so much pain because I was like the quintessentially always happy-go-lucky smiling little girl at home also making up stories just, you know, draw attention to me. I was the last of three siblings. And she said, you know, will you stop crying? Will you just say what happened? I said, nothing happened. I'm leaving acting. That's it. I'm a flop. Forget it. Just forget it. I'm never doing anything in my life. Okay? Happy? So she said, why would I be happy? And she's like, you know, she figured it out. She left. I kept on crying because I knew it was nobody else's dream except my own. And I was fighting the battle always on my own. It was only my passion that had driven me so far. And I washed my face, ready to just get out and have lunch or whatever, and just deal with it. And as I was washing my face, I looked at myself in the mirror, and I got a real bad jolt, a really bad jolt. I didn't like what I saw in the mirror. It was a very sad girl, a girl with puffy eyes, 
red lips. I was looking horrible. And I'm like, what's happening to Danaz? He won. That man won. He won over your passion. I used to talk a lot to myself in the mirror. That's how I used to act, I used to enact scenes, I used to do any logo in the bathroom and all that in the bathroom. So this bathroom, mirror and me were great friends. And when I spoke to myself, I said, he won. He won over your passion. He gave what he had. What did he have? Rudeness. A horrible way of speaking. What do you have? You have passion for what you love and that's acting. Don't stop. Thank God I didn't stop. Because a couple of years later, I did a great magnum opus serial with a great huge star cast. All of us were in it. Huge, like 15 of us. Some of uh, the actors I acted with are now great movie stars. And I acted in that serial and there was a wonderful director who who showed me how to get through those scenes. He, he held my hand. He explained to me, it was a great role of a psychopath, nothing to laugh about. He stood under the tripod. He would cry with me. He would laugh with me. He would tell me when to breathe. And I just was like a sponge. I just left it all up. I was greedy for learning. I was greedy. Because he was teaching me everything where I had failed over there. I have failed there. And I had pain in that. Because this was burning my passion down. Thank God I didn't give it up then. Because really, it would have been 25 years of absolutely nothing. Tanaz would have been a nobody. I'm so glad that he broke me down. And that's what I want to bring to Gen Z. You know, I want to tell you that when you break down and people talk to you in a harsh way, yes, 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 you will be broken into pieces. But you don't have to remain there. You build yourself up. You become a better version of yourself. So here I am, Tanaz 2.0. I'm the new version. You know, unless and until you don't face failure, you're never going to be happy with yourself because you'll never be knowing what you're worthy of. I really thanked that guy. I used to hate him all these years, but he actually paved my character. He made me the girl who I am today. I am a girl who's got a ridiculous amount of patience. I have a ridiculous amount of empathy and I have a ridiculous amount of passion to even teach people because I understand pain. There are so many gazillion actors I've worked with who don't come up to the mark. Gazillion people, newcomers who I have interacted with. And there's never once that I've laughed at them. There's never once that I've ever sold them short of what they could be. Never underestimate the power of the common man, Shah Khan said. And I'm saying never underestimate the power of your passion. So many people, when they come up to me and they say, you know, ma'am, you're always smiling. You're always happy. You never look sad. Ma'am, we've been seeing you since we were in school and we're so happy that we're sharing the stage with you or we're sharing screen time with you. And I don't want to tell them about how I've learned the craft, how to modulate, how to speak, how your speech should be, how you understand the character, where she's coming from, where she's going, and then you pick that scene in the middle which you're acting. No, they learn it. My power, my pain to power is being a good human being. It's a very rare breed. Try to be one. You'll see you're a misfit immediately. Move yourself out from that group. That group is not befitting you. And this is especially for Gen Z. I have three children, right? My 28-year-old is an old soul. But I've got to deal with a 13-year-old and a 10-year-old. And let me tell you, they're tough Gen Zs. We spoke about filters right now. Enjoy your filters. 
but make sure after you've enjoyed your filter for looking good, look inside you. Are you good? Can you stand there when everyone's mocking somebody and say that, hey, that's enough. That's where you draw your line. Can you stand up for somebody else? Can you help somebody else? That's my superpower. That's the pain that I've harnessed there for life. Today, it's almost 25 years since that incident happened. And I can tell you, there is never a day when I go to my work thinking it's the first day of work and I'm going to be wearing this and I've got saris to wear in the show and I've got this to wear and so and so is acting with me. Because being a good human being means you faced failure. And I wish you all a lot of failures in life. Because there's nothing, nothing, nothing that you can learn from success. But there's only everything you will learn from failure. God bless.